Hi, everyone. Happy New Year. Welcome to KQ. Mitch Hightower here with you, coming to you from our house in San Francisco, California, where it is in the low 50s. There's a bit of a chill in the air, but it's completely sunny and clear today, unlike over the weekend when it rained a lot. But we really needed the rain, so that's a good thing. So welcome, everyone. It's so great to see. We already have a chat going on before we even started the live today, so we really appreciate it. Jim at Suburban Barbecue is here. Great to see you. And Keith is, is here. Keith, we hope everything's going well with you and Terry and that you had a great holiday season at your house. And Stephen and Jacqueline are here. Hey, great to see you. Happy New Year to you. And I see Grill Sergeant's here. Hey, dude, awesome. Great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us today. And Mama Z from Mama Z's Texas Kitchen is here in the chat. Awesome. Okay, lots of our cool friends are here today. We really appreciate you guys joining us this afternoon. Uh, Philip will be here in this chair before this broadcast ends. I suppose we'll probably see him long about the time I bust out the booze. Anyway, just to let you know what we're doing today. Uh, hi, Margaret. Oh, I'm sorry. I just got distracted by the chat because our good friend Margaret's here from Margaret's Make and Bake. Hi, Margaret. Great to see you. Happy New Year. So, what we're doing today, <clears throat> we're going to take some holiday leftovers from our Christmas dinner, and we're going to turn them into mini shepherd's pies. And these are super easy and super yummy. And I'll show you the, the leftovers that I'm going to use that we had from our Christmas dinner, but you can certainly substitute any leftovers that you happen to have on hand. So for Christmas dinner, we had meatloaf, mashed potatoes, gravy, and roasted carrots, along with a few other goodies and accoutrements. Uh, so that's what we're going to be working with today for these mini shepherd's pies. Now, if you saw the thumbnail picture, we're calling them mini because we made them in these ramekins. We're, the first ones that we're going to make, we're going to do exactly that same way. But you can use this recipe and put it, uh, bake it in any kind of vessel you want. We also have one of these, uh, sometimes we call these banana split boats but this is really a personal glass casserole dish. So I'm gonna make a second one a little later in the broadcast and we'll put it in here to bake it and we'll see how that turns out. But for now, we're gonna use these little ramekins and make some small ones. We did these the other night and they were so yummy. I just, I loved it. It's all the good ingredients that we liked from our Christmas dinner and, and it, I, I just love mixing all these things together and coming up with something new. So I think it's really fun. I see Sunset's joined us. Hi, Sunset. Great to see you. Thank you so much for being here this afternoon. We really appreciate it. And while we're speaking about uh, Sunset, I just wanted to let everyone know uh, Sunset sent us a very generous holiday gift card for Christmas. And we really, really appreciate that. That was so kind and so thoughtful. So Philip and I talked it over. And what we decided to do is cash in the gift card, match that dollar amount with our own money, and then we donated all the money to the local animal shelter. We're big animal people. We have cats, as many of you already know, and we are very supportive of the animal shelter. We've always adopted our cats from a shelter rather than buying pets from a pet store or a breeder. And we do our best to contribute to the animal shelter financially whenever our budget allows. And our budget allowed thanks to Sunset. <laughs> and so we really appreciate that Sunset. It was so kind of you and to send us a gift and we decided we wanted to pay it forward. And so enough bragging about me doing that. We just, we just thought it was a really cool thing to do. And we also thought it was really cool that Sunset was so generous with us and, and we really appreciate that. So thank you so much, Sunset. So it made it possible for us to make a very nice donation to the animal shelter. And we're just thrilled that we could do anything to contribute because with the animal shelters, it's a little bit of money can actually go a really long way. And they can, you know, for a few hundred dollars, they can feed lots and lots of animals for weeks and weeks in the future. So that's we're really pleased that we had the opportunity to do that. And it was because of our good friend and longtime supporter, Sunset. So thanks again, Sunset, for doing that for us. So, hey, let's see, did I miss anybody? Four Seasons Barbecue is here and Ellis is here. Hi, Ellis, great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us today. And let's see, I see uh, Mike's here from the Dude's Kitchen and Grill. How awesome is that? And let me see, I think I missed a couple people went by. 
and I want to go back. Oh, Two Family Homestead is here. Hey, great to see you. Thanks for coming to join us this afternoon. We really appreciate you being here. We hope everyone had a great Christmas holiday for those of you that uh, participate and celebrate Christmas. We just had a quiet dinner here at home with only the people that live in our house because here in California, we're still under extremely strict lockdown guidelines. And we're really only supposed to leave the house for emergencies, doctor's appointments, or to go to the grocery store if you can't have your groceries delivered. So uh, we're really not getting out much at all. <laughs> so we've been having a lot of fun here at home. And for, like I said, for Christmas dinner, Philip made us a lovely meatloaf. Meatloaf is actually my very favorite sit down Sunday dinner. And so we had meatloaf, mashed potatoes, gravy, and like I said, some roasted carrots. And those are the ingredients that I'm going to be using along with a couple of other things to make these mini shepherd's pies. So yes, the people, <laughs> Two Family Homestead's right. People in California, we are not going anywhere right now. So we're doing our best to follow the guidelines as the governor has laid them out. And uh, so we're just doing our socialization right here online. So anyway, okay, let's see. I think I made sure I said hi to any, everyone and I'll be checking in with the chat periodically throughout our live stream today. So let's get on with what we're going to make. We're going to be making mini shepherd's pies, like I said, using holiday leftovers. So the holiday leftovers we had, like I said, we had meatloaf for dinner. So what I did was I just took some meatloaf and I cubed it. I just used a chef knife and cut it in small cubes. They're approximately three eighths to a half an inch square. And this is, it measures, if you pour it into a measuring cup, it's about half a cup of cubed meatloaf. And I also weighed it if you wanna be really uh, rigid about how many, how much you're using. This weighs, this was about two and a half ounces of meat. So it doesn't take very much to make these little mini pies, but that's all you have to do. I just cubed the cooked meatloaf or the baked meatloaf that we had left over from Christmas. And that's what's in this bowl. Now that's part of our filling. We're also going to have a topping and I'll get to that. So the rest of the filling consists of some vegetables. One of the vegetables that we fixed for Christmas dinner were roasted carrots. And the roasted carrots also had some apple chunks and some finely or medium diced onions. And they were baked for two hours and they were super, super yummy. And to extend the carrots, I've added some frozen peas and some frozen corn. So we've got carrots, corn, and peas for our vegetable element. And then I'm using the leftover gravy from Christmas dinner, and we're going to mix all of these ingredients together, and that's going to be the filling for our mini shepherd's pies today. And then for our topping, what we're going to use, of course, is mashed potatoes. And these are pretty stiff mashed potatoes. So we're going to be applying them and just spooning them on top rather than piping them out of a piping bag. We tried piping these the other day as an experiment. And like I say, this consistency of the mashed potatoes we have is really stiff. And I didn't really want to thin it out. You, it really, the mashed potatoes need to be pretty creamy to be able to pipe them out of a piping bag with a star tip and get that cool chefy look that you sometimes see on shepherd's pies. So we're just gonna spoon these on today and I'm going to mix in to the mashed potatoes some grated cheese and you can use any kind of grated cheese that you like. This is a combination of Colby and Jack cheese. And also I have a little bit of sour cream. So we're gonna mix all these these ingredients together and that will be the topping that goes over the filling in these little ramekins for our mini shepherd's pies. So let's check in with the chat really quick. Have we done a meatloaf video? The answer to that is no, but it is on our list of to-dos and I really like the meatloaf recipe that Philip uses. It's super, super yummy and it's very easy to do and we will be showing you how we make meatloaf in the not too distant future. So um, let me see. I think I said hi to everyone. Yes. Okay. So it looks like we're all doing good here in the chat room. So we really appreciate you guys hanging out with us today. And I see I've, pro I've missed a couple people. Double ZZ Ranch is here. Hey, great to see you. Thanks so much for coming to join us today. Happy New Year to you. So here we are. We've got all of our ingredients laid out already because I like to pre-measure everything. So let's get started on putting this filling together. So what I'm going to do first 
is I'm going to take the meatloaf that I already cut into cubes and just transfer it into a larger bowl. Super easy. And then the same deal with the vegetables. I'm going to take the carrots, the corn, and the peas, and we're just going to pop them right in there. And I like to make sure that I get everything out. There we go. Okay, so we've got the meatloaf, the cubed meatloaf, and the vegetables in a small bowl. And the next thing that we're going to do is add the gravy. So we're just going to pile the gravy right in there. Mm -hmm. Hi, honey. Okay, ladies and gents. Did somebody say shepherd's pie. Somebody said shepherd's pie, boo. Yay. Okay, Philip is in the house. We have a lot of our friends here today. We actually have, right now, according to this, we have 16 of our friends in the chat room. Well, welcome. So, yay, great to see you all today. And let's see, uh, yes, uh, Keith is here, and Jim from Suburban Barbecue, and Mama Z, and Karen, and Two Family Homestead, and Grill Sergeant's here. Oh my gosh, all, all, a lot of cool people are hanging out with us today, so thanks for joining us. So, what I've done so far is uh -huh. I just put the cubed meatloaf, and then the uh, vegetables in this bowl, okay. along with the gravy. And then all we have to do is stir all this together. Okay, you want to get all of the cubes of meat and the vegetables covered in gravy covered in gravy mm. yes covered in gravy and philip you made this gravy and you started out with the roux isn't that yeah. right mm -hmm. okay and tell us a little bit about how you like to make the gravy when you do it well i start out with butter and i use a little bacon grease okay heat that up and then i add onions and garlic chopped up small mince, and um, cook that down then i add the flour and cook that for about five minutes till it gets golden brown. And then I add uh, the chicken bouillon and cook that up and then add some cream and basically I'm done. Okay, so when you say chicken bouillon, what you mean is you have some liquid that you've dissolved yes, a bouillon yeah, yeah. cube. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Two cups of... Uh, We'll tell you how to make gravy one of these days. Yeah, Jim from Suburban Barbecue was asking about if we've done a meatloaf video, and I told him that was actually on our list for sometime in the next few weeks. We will be doing a meatloaf video. So, and uh, Margaret's here from Margaret's Make and Bake, and she's saying hi. Hi, Margaret. Great to see you. She's from all the way across the pond over there in the UK. Cool. So awesome to have you here today. Okay, so as you saw while we were chatting, all I did was stir everything together and got the all of the ingredients, the chunks of meatloaf and the vegetables, very well coated with the gravy. Now this gravy is a very luscious, thick consistency. Thank you very much. And it's quite flavorful. So we didn't need a lot. I have put a list below where this video is in the description of all the ingredients and the ratios of ingredients that we used. So now let's say for example, if someone didn't have meatloaf as leftover, you could use you turkey, yeah. you could use ham, you could use whatever you got, you know. Or nothing. I, <laughs> that yeah, you can just do this with vegetables if you want to keep it as a meat-free dish. You don't need to use a meat protein in this. You can just use vegetables. That'll work just fine. So this will be our filling. What we're going to do next is bring these little babies over here. And then I'm just going to transfer half of this filling into each of these ramekins. And these ramekins are already prepared. I sprayed them earlier with some olive oil cooking spray. That's right here. We always spray things off camera when we're doing recipes that require cooking spray because, you know, those of you, everyone's used cooking spray. It tends to float around I everywhere. Do it over the sink. Yeah, we did it over the sink today. This stuff kind of floats around in the air and we definitely do not want this to get on our electronic equipment. Cooking spray and laptops and expensive microphones and digital cameras do <laughs> not go together. So we just have this on set to show you that we used olive oil cooking spray today, but we actually sprayed these ramekins earlier off camera before we started our live stream. So the ramekins are already prepared. The oven is already preheated, and you may notice today we're using our June countertop oven again, as we often do. So now I'm just going to kind of eyeball half of this and just transfer it. Let me see if I can do this so everyone can see what I'm doing. I'm going to transfer this into the prepared ramekin. And I'm just going to gently press it down because we don't want this to be overflowing out of the top of the ramekin. Does that look like about half? That's not bad. Mm -hmm. We'll see, let's see how this looks once we get this in here. Okay, we're getting there. 
I think I need to go back and put a little bit more in the first one. Yeah, just a little. Okay. So we'll do our best to divide this as equally in half as we can. Okay, so there we go. That was supremely easy, as you just saw. This is not difficult to do at all. And like we said before, you can substitute whatever leftovers you happen to have from your holiday dinner. Okay, let's. I don't want to waste any of this yumminess. Okay, so now we have... Let me get that in there. So now we have the ramekins partially filled with our filling mixture, which is the meatloaf, vegetables, and the gravy that we just quite easily, simply stirred together. So this is ready to go, but now we need our topping. Topping. And topping consists of leftover mashed potatoes, a bit of grated cheese, and a little bit of sour cream. So let's get another bowl, and we'll transfer the potatoes into this bowl so we can stir it up. And we're just gonna add the grated cheese right in there. Very easy. And next, we're gonna just put the sour cream right in here. Okay, so supremely easy. Now, this is one of those times when this is, you, you can't really stir grated cheese into mashed potatoes. You have to use that very technical cooking schmooshing. term, schmooshing. Yes, I'm gonna just schmoosh the cheese into the mashed potatoes and the sour cream. And we're just gonna schmoosh this until it's all nicely schmooshed together. We wanna to try to get the cheese distributed throughout the mashed potatoes, as well as the sour cream. So we're getting there. And the potatoes already have butter and cream in them. Debbie Pavlock. Pavlock is here. Hi, Debbie. Great to see you. I just noticed she came through the chat room and Janine is here. Hey, Janine. Happy New Year to you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. Great to see you. Okay, so we're just stirring together the leftover mashed potatoes, the grated cheese, and the sour cream. And like I said before, if you missed it, all of the ratios and ingredients for this recipe that we're doing for these mini shepherd's pies are right in the description below where you're watching this live stream. So you can just copy and paste them into your digital recipe book if you like. And you can substitute just about any leftover stuff that you've got to make one of these. Now, of course, you are going to need some mashed potatoes because the top, you know, it's not shepherd's pie if the topping isn't mashed potatoes. So there we go, that looks pretty good. We've got all the cheese and sour cream stirred into the mashed potatoes. And now we need to transfer the mashed potatoes to the top of the filling that's already in the ramekins. Now, one thing I wanna do really quick is I wanna just clean up this edge. There's a little bit of filling on there. I'm gonna clean that up. I like to have really clean edges. I'll probably clean these again before we put them in the oven, depending on how much of the topping I get all over the place. So now we're gonna take this and just spoon some of it on top. So I wanna have a look at this and try to basically figure out what's half. So I'll just draw a little line down the center. Does that look about right? Mm. About half? Okay, so we're just gonna take the mashed potato mixture that we just made and we're just going to add it to the top of the filling. Supremely easy to do. Yes, Margaret's right. The gravy is the key to doing this as, uh, for the, as far as the filling is concerned. The mashed potato is the key to the topping. Now, let's say, for example, that you want to do this and you've got some leftover meat and or vegetables, but you don't have any gravy. No worries. You can use gravy out of a jar. It doesn't have to be gravy you made yourself like Philip did. Or you can take it in a little different flavor direction and you can use either marinara sauce from a jar or homemade marinara sauce. You could also use a sloppy joe sauce would be really good with this. So you can customize this and tweak this based on what's in your pantry, what leftovers you have in your fridge and you know what flavor profile you like and wanna create. So as you saw, I just very casually spooned the mashed potatoes over the top of the filling. Now, like I, if for those of you who missed when I mentioned it earlier, we did experiment with this and put the mashed potatoes in a piping bag. 
it's too stiff. For it's that. yeah. These mashed potatoes are too stiff for that. And we really like we like the stiff quality of the mashed potatoes as the topping. So we didn't want to thin these out with cream or anything like that. That would make it much easier to pipe. And I think piping it can make it look very chef -y, oh, yeah. <laughs> but it, we also have another way to make it chef -y, and we'll tell you what that is once they come out of the oven. So I'm going to take the other half of the mashed potatoes and I'm just going to spoon it on top of the filling, just like we did with the other one. I think I got that about in half, didn't we? Looks pretty good. That's good. Okay, so now I'm just going to press this down over the top of the filling. Thank you for handling it. And there you go. Voila. Okay, so we've got these two ramekins filled up. This is going to make a lovely lunch. I can hardly wait to eat it. No, I'm hungry. I know, me too. <laughs> okay, so let me, I don't want to lose that little baby. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to push that aside. I'm going to need another paper towel to wipe my fingers off. Okay. Okay, so there you have it. That's how easy it is to prepare the mini shepherd's pies with holiday leftovers. It's that fast and that easy. Of course, we did have the ingredients already measured out ahead of time because that's <laughs> how we like to operate when we do a live stream. Let me know. So it doesn't take very long. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a baking pan that's specifically designed to fit into the June oven. And I think it's easier to set these on a baking pan to put pull them in and out of the oven rather than having to pick up these small ramekins once they're hot. So we're just going to put them on a baking pan and then we're going to pop them in the oven and set the timer for 15 minutes. So let's go over here and we're just going to pop these babies right in the oven. There we go. And we're going to set the timer for 15 minutes. So let's go in here and set the timer. Drag this across 15 minutes. Okay, there we go, and they're underway. So if you missed the demonstration on how to put the filling and the topping together, no worries, because we're gonna repeat it a little later in this episode. I wanna acknowledge some people that have joined us in the chat room. Uh, Mr. Homeowner is here. Hey, Rob, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for hanging out with us this afternoon. Happy New Year. We hope you and your family had an awesome Christmas. It's very snowy at his house. <laughs> I've watched his last few videos, and the snow looks like it's this deep <laughs> all around his deck. And I don't know what happened to the swimming pool in his backyard. It must be completely under ice and snow <laughs> right now. But anyway, it's great to see you here today. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. And Chef Alexis is here from the other side of the stove. Awesome to have you here, Chef Alexis. Happy New Year to you. He's all the way out on the East Coast and I'm pretty sure it's snowing where he is too. So, okay, great to have all of you here this <laughs> afternoon. We really appreciate it. So now while the mini Shepherd's pies are baking. Guess what comes next? My favorite part of the show. Cocktails. Okay, we're gonna make some cocktails. And for those of you who may have missed the details about how to make the mini shepherd's pie, we're gonna repeat the directions for that once more before this live stream ends. We're just gonna take a little break right now while the first batch we made is baking and we're gonna mix up some yummy cocktails. So I see flour, eggs, and yeast has joined us. Hello, great to see you here. Happy New Year, and thanks for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. You're just in time for the cocktail portion of the show. Ah. So let's get this show on the road. One of our favorite things about doing our Tuesday live feeds is that it's an excuse and a reason for afternoon day drinking. I mean, what's not to like about day drinking? It's the holidays after all. We should be able to indulge just a little bit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make a hurricane cocktail. And there are lots and lots of ways to make a hurricane cocktail. If you Google hurricane cocktail recipes, you'll see there's gazillions of recipes for how to put together a hurricane. I'm gonna show you the way that we like to do it. It's very easy, very straightforward. So like we normally do, uh, we have a three-part cobbler style shaker, the vessel, the strainer and the cap. And I noticed out of the corner of my eye that Suzanne is here from Suzanne's Sweet Kitchen. Hey, Suzanne, great to see you. Her Cookie Monster Santa oh, yeah. cake was the cutest <laughs> of the cute. Oh, we thought that was just so darling, Suzanne. You did an awesome job on that. And I really like how she persevered because the puff ball on the Santa hat fell off and then she figured out how to put it back on and it was just awesome. And it looked so darling when it was all done. So awesome job to you. 
And Karen, hey, Karen, great to see you. We hope everything's going good with you. Happy New Year, and thanks for joining us this afternoon. And Scott's here, Dr. Taste Good Barbecue. Woot, woot, Dr. Taste Good. Everything that comes out of his grill looks amazing. I have yet to taste his food, but one of these days, I hope we get to hang out. So thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Okay, so we're on our way to making a cocktail. And what I need to do first before we actually mix the drink is I need to put some ice cubes in the glasses. So we're using classic hurricane style glasses to serve our hurricanes. And we have ice cubes over here in our brand new pretty ice bucket that we got to match our cocktail shakers. How cool is that? So we're going to put some ice cubes in the serving glasses. I'm gonna fill these, oops. Okay. Well, since it's just us, I'm gonna go for it. If that, if we were having guests, I would throw that ice cube down the sink. That should do. So we're gonna put a lot of ice in these glasses. Usually I can pick up more than one ice cube at a time. Okay, let's see. Uh, that looks pretty good. I think we'll just go with that. We can always add another ice cube if we find the glass isn't quite as full as we'd like it to be once we're done pouring. So we've got our ice in our hurricane glasses, and now it's time to get on with actually mixing the cocktail. So for this hurricane, we're using light rum, dark rum, orange juice, lime juice, and grenadine. Now, if you're not familiar with grenadine, it's quite simply a simple syrup, yeah. okay? It's basically a simple syrup with this red. intense red color. It's got a sweetness and a slight tartness to it, and it really uh, adds not only a sweetness and a nice flavor to the drink, but it also helps uh, create the color that we're going to get with this cocktail, and you'll see that shortly. So. The ratios for what we're doing here are also down in the description right below where the ingredients for the mini shepherd's pies are. So you can copy and paste that if you wanna try making these cocktails at home yourself. And this is really, really easy to do. I'm gonna add some ice cubes to the cocktail shaker. There we go. I like to fill the cocktail shaker approximately halfway full with ice cubes. That's usually plenty. Now, this drink is actually really super easy because all the ingredients are equal parts. So we're gonna have two ounces of each of all the five ingredients that we've got. So this is a jigger. It's half an ounce cup on this side and a one ounce cup on the other side. So we're gonna fill this up twice with the light rum. And these speed pouring things for the bottles, this really helps not only keep things neat, but it also makes pouring a lot faster. So we're gonna also add two ounces of the dark rum. Now this isn't spiced dark rum, this is just regular dark rum. Good molasses flavor. Yes, you can use spiced dark rum if you want. And you can also, if you want, if you, if you like coconut, you can use coconut rum for the light rum and substitute that if you want to introduce a little bit of coconut flavor to your drink. So now it's time for the OJ. So we're going to do two ounces of OJ. One. Two. There we go. Okay, so we got the OJ happening. Now we're going to get on with the lime juice. I see Julie Gilpin has joined us in the house. Hello, Julie, great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us today. And Barb's here from Take Controlled Beauty. Awesome to see you, Barb. Thanks for hanging out with us. Happy New Year to you and your family. So we're in the middle of making a hurricane cocktail and we're up to the point where it's time for the lime juice. So we're gonna put two ounces of lime juice in the shaker. I will hand this off to my trusty oh. partner. Okay, now we're gonna add the grenadine. Now, if you're familiar with making cocktails, you may think, geez, two ounces of grenadine, that's kind of a lot of grenadine, but you'll see what happens when we do this. It's actually really necessary, not only for the flavor profile, but it also helps give us this really awesome color for the cocktail. So we're gonna do two ounces of grenadine. 
So this one's really easy because there's five ingredients and it's two ounces of each ingredient. So you don't have to really think about it too much. So we've got all of our ingredients in the shaker. And now it's time to very carefully and securely place on the lid and the cap. And I wanna make sure this is nicely all put together so we don't have any leaks or make a mess. And then we're gonna give this a really vigorous shake. That should do it. Okay, now it's time to pour. Thank you, sir. Okay, now it's time to pour. So let's see what our result is. Ooh, luscious color. Okay, let's put a little one in this one so we each have one. I think I'm gonna run a little short. Not too bad. Now see, I probably could have easily have put a couple of more ice cubes in here and then our glasses would be full. So that's just a matter of, you can always go back afterwards and pop in another ice cube or two to your glass. That's no problem. Probably even maybe three. There we go. Now, one thing I neglected to do was have uh, our metal straws on the set. But we do have, right behind you, there's gold paper straws. Okay, so usually we like to use recyclable straws because we're trying to be kinder to the planet and we drink a lot of cocktails around here where we use straws. So we usually use metal straws that can just be washed and reused. I left those way across on the other side of the room over in the bar. So we're just going to use paper straws today because they happen to be right here on set. So you could also garnish this if you want with an orange wheel or a maraschino cherry or both would be super cool. We're just going to have them plain today because that's just what we felt like doing. So one for you, okay. one for me. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, non-binary guests, this is a hurricane cocktail. Cheers and happy new year. Let's give this baby a taste. Mmm. Mm. Oh my gosh. That is the so brown, yummy. The orange, the lime. And These, it's sweet to the grenadine. Yeah, it's sweet from the grenadine, but it's not cloyingly no. sweet no. at all. I am totally getting, mm. I can totally taste the dark rum yeah. really, really well. This is an excellent combination of flavors. Good. That's why hurricanes are so popular because they taste so good. They they do, I can taste the booze, but they don't taste especially boozy. So that's why you have to be careful. Don't get in too much trouble with these because they are so easy going down that you no can drink 10. Mm. 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 Delicious. Mm. <clears throat> Refreshing. Oh my gosh, these are so good. So the ingredients for how to do the, or the ingredients and the ratios for this are also right down in the description below where you're watching this live stream. Cheers, Julie. Cheers, Karen. Cheers, Suzanne. Cheers. Uh, Risa's here. Hey, great to see you. It's awesome to have you here. She's, oh, I love her show. So happy to have you here today. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. It's great to see all of you here. So let's do one more toast to all of our lovely friends and fans. Cheers, everyone. We really appreciate that you guys come and hang out with us every Tuesday at noon. It's supremely fun for us and we hope it is for you too. So let's have another sip of this lovely cocktail. Mm. The mini shepherd's pies are in the oven. There's about three and a half minutes left to go. And then we'll pull those babies out. We're going to have to let them cool just a little bit before we give them a taste. But I am definitely looking forward oh, yeah. to tasting those because they are so delicious. Now, we used meatloaf, but you could use whatever leftover meat protein you have. Or like Philip pointed out, you don't have to use meat at all. You could just use all vegetables. That would be super, super yummy as well. And while we made these first ones in small ramekins, you can also do it in a larger personal casserole dish like this, or it doesn't have to be mini at all. I mean, you can do it. If you have enough leftovers, you can make one in a nine by 13 pan if you've got that much material to work with. But the larger they get, the, the longer the baking. Right. Time. We're doing the small ones for 15 minutes. When we do this one, we'll probably bake it for more like 20. Yeah. And if you were doing a great big, a pan, much larger pan, like maybe an eight by eight or a nine by 13, you'll probably want to go for a half an hour. Gauge it by how the top of the mashed potatoes look. You want them to look like they're just slightly baked, but you don't want them to be burnt. Does that make sense? 
Yeah. I, I think it does. Anyway, hopefully it does. So anyway, we'll uh, pull these out in a, just a couple more minutes to go and we'll show you exactly what they're supposed to look like when they're finished. Meanwhile, I'm having another sip of this yummy hurricane. These are so good. Mm. Great to see you, Barb. Thanks for coming to join us today. We hope you have a great new year and we'll see you soon. It's so great to have you here today. Thank you. Okay, so I see, let's see, I, I think I've said hi to everyone so far, and we really appreciate all of you being here. It's so fun to do this every Tuesday. And this is actually our final Tuesday live stream for 2020. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, because it's, <laughs> it's the last Tuesday of the year. So we've been doing uh, Tuesday live streams for about the last three months, every Tuesday at noon. And we actually think it's super fun. And so we're going to continue doing Tuesday live streams. Every Tuesday at noon, we're going to continue to have a live stream starting next week as soon as it's 2021. And so many of us can't wait for this year to be over. So we're looking forward to kicking off 2021 with some really fun new live streams. And we're going to show you how to do a bunch of cool new recipes. And we've got a big long list of things to make and bake and cocktails to mix. Mm -hmm. We are not going to run out of booze around here. Mmm. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Hey, so nice to see you all here. And thanks, Rob. Mr. Homeowner is encouraging people to hit the like button. If you are enjoying the show, if you press the like button, it helps us grow our channel. And if you're not already subscribed, we hope you'll click that red subscribe button as well as the bell symbol. And then in the future, whenever we upload new videos or when it's time for a live stream to happen, you'll get a notification sent right to your phone that'll let you know what we're up to and what's going to be happening next. So I see Texas Food Fan has joined us in the chat. Great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us today. We have an awesome chat going on here. And Dano's here from Dano's Pit Patio. Great to see you too. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. So we have a very lively chat going on and we've been having a really good time making these pot pies and they're just about ready to pop out of the oven. I see the timer's gone off. So we're gonna push the keep baking button because we're gonna bake another batch in a few minutes. So let's see if these look like they're done enough. Uh, they're not bubbling like they were last time. Oh. Do you wanna leave them in a yeah, little longer? Yeah. Okay. All right. We're not minutes. satisfied with the doneness on this yet. So we're gonna give it five more minutes. That's the beauty of this oven is it comes right up and asks you, if you don't take the food out, it'll ask you if you want to bake longer and then you can just say yes and push how much time you want. So we're going to give that five more minutes. I thought we did last night. It, we did. But after 15, it looked like it was bubbling. Yeah, it did. This isn't quite as, it may be because um, all the ingredients were really cold when we started out. That could have something to do with it. So we're going to leave those in the oven for a little bit longer. And while that's happening, for those of you that missed the original demonstration, we're going to repeat it right now because we have another set of ingredients already ready already. So this time what we're gonna do is we're going to make one shepherd's pie and we're gonna use this. This is actually like a banana split boat, uh, but this is oven proof. And so we're going to go ahead and use this unit and we're just gonna make one larger one this time rather than small ones and ramekins. So let me see. I need to go and approve a message right there. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna use this for our next one. This glass baking dish has already been sprayed with olive oil cooking spray. Okay, so it's already pre-greased already. Um, you may have heard me mention earlier that we always like to spray things um, off camera over in the kitchen. Usually we spray cooking spray over the sink because this stuff tends to become airborne and we don't want this spray coming in contact with any of our electronic equipment because cooking spray and laptops and webcams don't go together. So we've got our vessel that we're going to be baking in already ready already. And I've got two bowls that we're going to use to mix up our filling and our topping. So what we were using for the filling today is we had some leftover meatloaf. I asked for meatloaf dinner for Christmas and Philip made this lovely meatloaf. It's actually a combination of pork and beef. And you've also got some onion and peppers and breadcrumbs and egg, uh, beer. Beer, 
Mm -hmm. beer. You see, we're, we're working some alcohol into just about everything. So, and um, Jim from Suburban Barbecue is asking if we're going to tell how to make the meatloaf. And the yes. answer to that is yes. It'll be coming up in the not too distant future. We'll tell you exactly how we made this meatloaf. So I just took a piece of meatloaf that was about three eighths of an inch thick, a slice of meatloaf, and I cut it into cubes. Okay. So they're about, you know, three eighths or half an inch square. That's all it took. So plop in that goes into one bowl. And along with the meatloaf, we're gonna use some veggies. This is some roasted carrots that we also had for Christmas dinner and we had a few left over. And I also added to that some frozen peas and some frozen corn. And all of the ratios for these ingredients are listed in the description right below where you're watching this live feed. So we're gonna put the veggies in with the meatloaf. There we go, pardon my fingers. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is add our gravy. And we're using gravy that Philip made from scratch. You can use gravy from a jar, that's okay. You can also use, if you don't have any gravy or you're not crazy about gravy as an element, you can change the flavor profile up with this by using some marinara sauce or even some uh, sloppy joe sauce would also work really well and taste really yummy. Take it in the Asian direction with poison. Yes, you could do that as well. That's another idea. Yeah. And you don't have to use meatloaf. I mean, you don't have to use any meat at all if you want to just make a vegetable shepherd's pie. That'll be, that's just fine. Um, we're using meatloaf because that's what we had left over from Christmas dinner. But if you had turkey or ham or steak, you just cut it up in bits and replace that instead of the meatloaf. So now I'm going to add the gravy. I want to make sure I get all of this lovely goodness out of this dish. Okay. And then all that we need to do is stir all this up. We want the meatloaf chunks and all the vegetables to be coated with the gravy. And you'll notice that this isn't swimming in gravy. There's enough gravy to get everything coated, but it's not going to be soupy. So there we go. We're just going to stir this around until we get all of the meat and vegetables coated with the gravy. Mama Z is saying that ch uh, cream of chicken soup would also work oh, really yes. well. Uh -huh. Yes, mm -hmm. you're right, Mama Z. That would totally work. You could use cream of mushroom, cream of chicken. Either of those two would be an excellent alternative. Okay, so there, as you can see, I just stirred everything really thoroughly together so that the meat and vegetables are all coated with the gravy that we used. So this is our filling. That's ready to go. Now we're ready to make our topping. So for the topping, oh, we're going to have to pause for a moment because the food is ready to come out. So I'm just going to yeah. set this aside. Uh, I'm going to need those. Yeah. And well, these have been in for 20 minutes now. We originally started with 15 and we decided that wasn't quite long enough. So we've been in for 20 minutes and they're definitely bubbling now. So. Okay, good. And they're done. Okay, so once you see that there's a little bubbling going on around the edge of your baking vessel, whether it's, uh, whether it's one of these type uh, baking vessels or if you're using ramekins, once you see a little bit of bubbling around the edge, that usually means you're good. So, oh, this one actually overflowed a little bit. That's all right. Okay, so I want to get these out and be careful because this is hot. Here, put it on here. Okay, this is very, very, very hot. Ooh! So there we have it. Okay, so one of them overflowed just slightly, but that doesn't spoil anything. That's perfectly okay. So they're going to say, stop bubbling. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're going to have to sit and cool off just a little bit before we can do a taste test. So I'm want I'm going to caution you to be really yeah. careful because that pan is really hot. Okay, so we've got the filling for our next batch already ready already. And let's move on and we're going to make the topping now. So for the topping, we're using leftover mashed potatoes. And these mashed potatoes, like I mentioned before, there are preferred way of making mashed potatoes is that they're a little on the stiff side. And so that's why we didn't pipe the mashed potatoes on the top of the shepherd's pie. We tried. <laughs> well, we did try. The, these are a little too stiff for that. And we could have watered them down, but we kind of like our mashed potatoes a little on the stiff side. So we didn't, we didn't, uh, you could add more cream and get these a little soupier and then you, it'd be easier to pipe them on if you want to do a fancy design. But we've got an alternative to piping 
to make this look a little more chefy. And once these cool down, we'll show you what that is. So what we're gonna do next is to the leftover mashed potatoes, we're gonna add some grated cheese. And today we're just using a combination of Colby and Jack cheese, Monterey Jack. And it doesn't take very much. We're just gonna dump that right in. And then we're going to add a little bit of sour cream. So go in here and scrape this sour cream out. There, okay. So now we've got the potatoes, the cheese, and the sour cream in here. And we've got to use our schmooshing technique. And we're just going to blend the mashed potatoes with the grated cheese and the sour cream. Okay, supremely, supremely easy to do. And I like to make sure that I get the grated cheese as evenly distributed throughout the mashed potatoes as possible. That way you're gonna get a little bit of cheesy goodness in every bite. <laughs> Margaret says she likes it when things overflow because you get all the crispiness around the edge. <laughs> yeah, she's right. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. Overflowing is not a bad thing. Okay. Okay, now. Well, it's why we use a baking It's sheet. why we use the baking sheet too, because it catches the drips, as well as you saw, it makes it easier to get things in and out of the oven. It's just a little, I think, safer to grab onto a pan with the ramekins on top of it, rather than have to take each small ramekin out individually. So there we go, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we've got the cheese and sour cream mixed into the mashed potatoes. So that was super easy. Now I need to get a paper towel, wipe off my fingers. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is transfer the filling into our prepared baking dish. And this time, instead of ramekins, we're just using a small personal size casserole baking pan. <clears throat> I think it's from Pyrex, isn't it? It says on the bottom. Hey, Suzanne. Okay, it's so awesome to see you today, Suzanne. It's just a baking dish. We really, <laughs> we really appreciate you being here, Suzanne, and we're so looking forward to seeing what lovely cake creation you come up with next. She has awesome, awesome cakes on her channels. Love her. So mm -hmm. thanks mm -hmm. for coming to join us today, Suzanne. We really appreciate it. Okay, so now we've got the prepared baking dish, which has already been sprayed with olive oil cooking spray. And now I'm going to take all of the filling. We don't have to split it between two like we did with the ramekin. So we're just going to take all of the filling and transfer it into the prepared baking dish. And I just want to spread this around the bottom of the dish and get it as even as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to taste good no matter what. So I just like to spread this around a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. So I'll let you have that. So now we've got our filling in the baking pan. And now we're going to top the filling with the mashed potato mixture. And this may or may not cover up the whole thing, we'll see. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna spoon this over the top of the filling. And I want to get all this goodness out of this bowl. I don't want to leave any of this yummy mashed potato mixture behind. Okay, so that's good. Now, I'm going to use my finger and clean that up. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to press down the mashed potatoes a bit to get as even a layer as you can over the top of the filling. If you don't cover up all of the filling, that's okay. This probably isn't going to spread out to cover everything, but that won't really matter. Okay. Good job. That's not bad. Okay, there we go. So now we've got. Does that look okay to you? Yeah. If I get it much thinner, it's going to be really thin. So. Sure. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so time for another paper towel. I'm going to get rid of all these. Issues. Okay, because I keep touching everything with my fingers. <laughs> okay, so. There, we've got a small personal size casserole baking pan filled with the meatloaf vegetable gravy mixture and topped with the mashed potato cheese sour cream mixture. 
And now we're going to put this baby in the oven. Should I put this on a baking pan or can we just put this like this? You can put it like, it's okay. like big enough. This, it's is, up, this is big enough that we can yeah. probably get it get it out without having it on a pan. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven right now. So we'll pop that baby in there. And I'm going to set the timer on this for 20 minutes and we'll see how it looks at the end of 20 minutes. So let's get our timer set. Bada bing. Okay. Number two is underway. Now this is probably still really hot. So let's put these out here and I'll pick these up. Oh, hey, Barb, tell Bella we said hi, too. We're looking forward to seeing Bella on another episode of your show really soon. Her granddaughter sometimes oh. joins her in the kitchen when she does cooking videos. All right. So if, uh, if you're not familiar with the Take Control Beauty channel, Barb does cooking videos. She does how to take care of yourself and how to take care of your skin. And she also does wig videos, which Ooh. I love watching her try on new wigs. That's so fun. So... Uh, Great job. Thank you for joining us today, Barb. We really appreciate it. And Sunset's asking if the June oven broils too. Yes. Yes, it does. It actually, it can do a bake cycle. It can do a broil cycle. You can do a bake and broil combination that they call roasting. So we could have put these in uh, towards the end of the time, the baking time. We could have turned the broiler on to probably crisp up the top of the potatoes a little bit. If you like your potatoes with a little crisp going on on the top, you can certainly uh, change the setting to broil and leave it under the broiler for you know two or three minutes until you get the desired crispiness that you're looking for. That's That wasn't important to us today, but you can definitely toast up the top of the right. mashed potatoes more by using the broil feature if you like. So let me grab one of these. Both of these going on. Oh, we've got some of the cheese broke off the edge. Oops, oh dear. Right. I stuck my feet. <laughs> <That's> okay. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to try that again. I'm going to have to try picking it up with both hands this time. There we go. There we go. Okay, finally. <laughs> okay, let me put these over here. All right, now, I promised earlier a chefy alternative for how to finish these off. Since we didn't pipe on the uh, mashed potato topping, what we're going to do, hey, everyone can grill has just joined us in the chat. Great to see you. Thanks so much for coming to hang out with us today. We've just placed another uh, mini shepherd's pie in the June oven to bake. And these two came out a few minutes ago and they're gonna be ready to taste in the not too distant future. So we're just getting ready to finish this off. And as you saw, for those of you that were here, we just spooned the mashed potato topping on top of the filling rather than piping it because our mashed potatoes were really stiff consistency and the piping technique didn't really work yeah. out very well. So that's why we just spooned it on. So since we didn't get the chefiness from piping on the mashed potatoes, we're gonna get some chefiness by adding just a little bit of very finely chopped fresh parsley. Mm -hmm. This parsley came from the container garden on our balcony. And so I'm just gonna add a little bit of that and voila, mini shepherd's pies made from Christmas dinner leftovers. Ta-da! Okay, so here we go. So let's take a picture of these babies. This is uh, my brand new phone. We both got new phones for Christmas. How cool is that? So let's take a picture of these babies so we can Instagram it later for our friends who didn't get to be here today. These look awesome. Super cool. Now, one thing I did forget to put on the set was forks or spoons to eat these yeah. with. Could you help us out? Yeah. Okay, Philip, I didn't bring, I didn't have any utensils on the set for us to eat these. That's one thing I forgot about, so. We need forks or spoons? Yeah, I'm gonna get uh, one of those. To okay. Put them on. So. Put a spoon or a fork? Uh, I think I want both, please. Yes, Julie is correct. Julie is pointing out that there are actually two different types of traditional shepherd's pie. One is made with lamb mints and one is made with beef mints. So instead of beef mints today, we used 
meatloaf, which is actually a combination of pork and, and beef. Yeah. So what we've got here is the finished result. And we just finished putting on some herbs. Now, Sunset's asking about what herbs we have growing. We have curly leaf parsley, flat leaf parsley, basil, oregano, rosemary, and sage. sage. Those are the things that we grew this year. We don't always do the same thing every year, but this year we had uh, three 20-inch um, size containers on our balcony filled with potting soil, and we started all of the herbs from seeds that we bought online. And they really did pretty well this year. Yeah, Phillips had a lot of lovely sage leaves to use, and you've been using it for a, a bunch of things. I like, like making a cream sauce with it. Yeah, putting on just about anything. Sage cream sauce, which goes good on anything. So, okay, uh, let's see. Okay, I think I said hi to everyone, and yes. Okay, good, all right. So we've got these little beauties, and we're ready to give these a try. Are these still too hot to touch? Not, not yeah. really. Okay, we're good. Now I got parsley all over yeah, everything. Yeah. Sorry about that. I should probably take another beauty shot. Jesse's on the just, back. Okay. okay. So we're going next. We're going to we're going to get ready to taste test. Woot woot. Okay. So now you can serve this with a fork or a spoon, or as you can see, we've done both. So you can enjoy this whatever way you want to. <clears throat> I think mm. these look lovely. Mm. I can't wait to taste it. Okay, so we're gonna give these little beauties a taste. I wanna try this topping first. Just get a little taste of topping and see if it's not too hot. Oh, nice cheesiness when you when you get that. Did you guys, I don't know if they saw that. Get some, oh, there we go. A little melty melty. A little melty melty with the cheese action mm -hmm. going on there. There we go. Let me give these potato topping a taste. Mmm. Really yummy. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Mm. I wanna get down there and get that filling. Mm. Ooh, this is comfort food. Yeah, this is very, very comforting. The filling, of course, with the gravy surrounding the vegetables and the meat is really lovely. It's 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 like a pot pie, but without any crust. Mmm. This is a really yummy, yummy, yummy combination of flavors, don't you think? Mm. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Oh, I wish you all were here so you could taste this. <laughs> it's so yummy. And like Philip said, it's really comforting. And we just, you know, tartered up the mashed potatoes a little bit with some sour cream and some cheese, which gives us this nice stringy cheese thing happening when you pull your fork or spoon away from the plate. Mmm. Mm. These are so good. And really easy. I mean, of course, you know, leftovers is usually easy. But I think this really takes the leftovers and kind of elevates it to its whole own dish, if yeah. you will. It makes it fun. It is fun. Because otherwise, I'm going to just, you know... Put it on a plate and nuke it. And now it's a little dish and me. Okay, Stephen and Jacqueline have to cut out. It's great to see you Bye. today. Thanks for coming to hang out with us. We hope everything's going well where you are. And Happy New Year to you. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, let's see. Oh, and Julie's also saying there's a fisherman's or captain's pie oh. that's like shepherd's pie, but it's made with seafood. Mm -hmm. So... There you go. There's lots of choices. Oh, there. Yeah. Thank you. She, Julie always has so much good information and we really appreciate that you share it in the chat because it really makes the chat experience along with our show so much more fun. So thank you so much. That's really, really cool. Yes, we love this. Uh, mashed potatoes is my all time favorite potato thing, maybe second only to French fries. <laughs> and we don't do potatoes as often as we used to because we're, sometimes doing a low carb thing, <laughs> except not during the holidays. Uh, we, we sort of threw the whole low carb thing out the window during the holidays and we'll get back to it as soon as it's January 2nd. Let's give this another taste. I really like how nicely creamy the filling is from the gravy and I like the cheese element in the mashed potato topping. It's a really nice, mm, really lovely textures. It's nice and smooth. And adding more vegetables and makes creamy. it you know, healthy. Mm -hmm. More vegetables makes it healthy. Mm. And of course, you could just do a shepherd's pie with just vegetables. It wouldn't be a traditional shepherd's pie anymore. But I'm not sure if this is it. This is based on a traditional shepherd's yeah. pie. But, but like I said, we use the Christmas leftovers to make it happen. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, this tastes so good. Mmm. Mm. These are yummy. And as you saw... It's super easy. 
if you know we used meatloaf because that's what we had left over from Christmas dinner, which you could use whatever you have left over from Christmas dinner and make the same thing happen. I'm not sure what alternative you could use for the topping if you didn't have any mashed potatoes. Well, you do like you do yams. Yeah, you, you could just smash yams? them up. If you have some sweet potatoes or yams, you could or smash them up and use that for topping. Breadcrumbs or even... Uh, yeah, you could just bake the rest of the filling and just put like some breadcrumbs on top. That would be... That would be um, that would give you a crunch element yeah. that this does not have. This is, Everything here is very smooth, so there's not a lot of textural contrast. But the I most really... Texture is from the corn. Yeah, the most texture is from the corn. But I really love the creaminess of the filling that was created by adding the gravy. And I love how smooth your mashed potatoes are and they taste so good with a little cheese added to them. That's a really awesome thing. So the cheese and sour cream. Hurricanes and shepherd's pie. Yes, Karen. It's lunchtime mm. here in San Francisco. Mmm. Mmm. That is so good. Well, that's a really good idea. Well, Karen is suggesting that we could also use for the topping, if we want to lower the carbs in this, we could use mashed cauliflower. Oh, yeah, right. Duh. You've actually made cauliflower puree before, mm -hmm. and we really liked it. Yeah. We make cauliflower that's rice a couple of times a week because we stopped eating regular grain rice and brown rice. Um, and that's really cut the carbs down a lot because I used to eat rice every single day. Now I eat cauliflower rice instead. So, yes, definitely using a mashed cauliflower for the top of this a great idea. is a great idea. Really great suggestion. Thank you, Karen. Oh, Julie says, how about putting tater tots on top? Oh, no. Tater tots. Woo woo. I love tater tots. Good answer, Julie. I love tater tots. Hey, Terry's here. Hi, Terry. Great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. Uh -huh. Philip ate his whole mm. mini shepherd's pie already. I still have some of mine here because I'm busy yeah. jabbering mm. instead of eating. But yes, this was... Um, we need a rum cake to end the meal. Texas food fan says oh. we need a rum cake. Mm, you okay. are right. You are right. So, okay, it's going to be time to make a cake then. <laughs> We're going to have to get out the flour and the sugar and the rest of the cake ingredients because that sounds oh. awesome. Yesterday I made chocolate blondies. Yes, you did. We, have, we actually have chocolate blondies for dessert. Now, explain to us why chocolate blondies are chocolate blondies and not brownies. Um. Because I just took the blondie recipe, which is not the same. Brownies is a lot more to do with chocolate, you know, melting chocolate, making it all. So I'm just, but I like blondie recipe is really easy. I just added a quarter cup of cocoa to the blondie recipe, and voila, chocolate blondie. And that's what makes it. Chocolate and they're really blondie. good. Okay. <laughs> they're not the same. It's not the same as brownies. No, they're not. But they're very close, and they're delicious, and they're easy. They are so delicious. Last time I made them with uh, peanut butter chips. Mmm. I see Rick's Barbecue and Specialties has joined us in the chat. Great to see you, Rick. Thanks for coming to hang out today, and Happy New Year to you. And yes, Julie, she's talking about Hasselback potatoes. Now. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. We've, We've done, done a video on Hasselback potatoes, actually. Those are so yummy. We made mini ones. Yeah. We bought <laughs> little, like, the new potato-sized potatoes, and we cut those in the Hasselback technique and bake those, they were so, they make really good bite-sized appetizers. It takes a little, it takes like an hour to bake those babies. And we kept basting them every 20 minutes with butter. That made them really, really good. That's an excellent suggestion. So blondies are awesome with butterscotch chips. Well, yesterday you used peanut butter yeah. chips. But I've done used butterscotch before too, yeah. We have, yeah. And they are super, super and delicious. I, some, I did a gingerbread version of the blondies. I added molasses and ginger and those are also really good. Well, you could also, I see, um, our Flour, Eggs, and Yeast is commenting that you could go to their channel ah. because they bake so many lovely things and check out, uh, let's see, I'm sorry, I lost the feed. It's moving by really quickly all of a sudden. They've got a rum cake recipe over there, oh. so we're going to have to go check that out. Thank you for letting us know about that. So if you're not familiar with the Flour, Eggs, and Yeast channel, after you're done watching our live stream today, you know, click over and check it out and hit their subscribe button. Let's help them grow their channel. They have some really cool stuff going on over there. We really enjoy their show. So thanks for being with us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. Okay. Uh, oh, yes. And on the Everyone Can Grill channel, they have a recipe for armadillo potatoes. 
Now, I'm not sure exactly what that means, yeah. but we that are definitely cool. going to go find out. <laughs> I want to know every detail about that. So let's also make sure we check out the Everyone Can Grill channel. And if you're not already subscribed to their channel, hit that little red oh. subscribe button in the bell symbol so you'll find out when they have new videos coming out. And <clears throat> they, oh my gosh, armadillo potatoes. We're going to have to go find out what that's all about. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. We really appreciate it. Oh, <laughs> okay. Flour, eggs, and yeast is saying they don't have a rum cake recipe. Oh. They just thought it was funny that I was saying flour, eggs, and listing the ingredients that's basically their <laughs> channeling. Okay, so here's the deal now. I'm gonna, uh, I, I think now flour, eggs, and yeast needs to find a rum cake recipe and show us how to make it in the oh. not too distant future. How about that? Okay. Challenge. Yes, challenge. Rum cake. Okay, speaking of challenges. We have to do one too, though, you know. Uh, speaking of challenges, we have a new collaboration coming up that we're going to announce on Friday. So if you are operating a food channel, Mm. and you want to do a little networking with some of our other food channel friends, a collaboration is an excellent way to do that. And if you've been familiar with our channel for a while now, we actually did, uh, we organized three collaborations last year, and we're going to start one off right at the beginning of the year. We're not going to tell you the details now, but be on the lookout Friday on New Year's Day. <coughs> we'll have a new pre-recorded video here on our channel and we'll tell you every detail about the upcoming collaboration challenge. And we're also giving you plenty of lead time to put your recipes and video together. So we're going to announce the collaboration on Friday, January 1st. And then the videos for the collaboration will be coming out on Friday, January 29th. So you'll have four weeks to figure out what you want to make for this collaboration challenge and put your video together. So hopefully that gives everyone enough time to be able to participate because we'd like to see as many challenges as possible uh, or as many participants yeah, yeah. in the collaboration as possible is what I'm trying to say. Uh, we find that every time we do collaborations, whether we've organized them ourselves or participated in collaborations other people have organized, our subscribers and our watch time always goes up. It's really fun to be able to work with other people. We're going to have a custom hashtag, and we're also going to have a new thing now that we can do. We can have a custom playlist. So with the new features on YouTube, you can have a custom playlist, not just for yourself and your channel, but you can have a custom playlist, and you can add other people's videos for, from your collab, or those people that you've given approval to can add their own video to the collaboration playlist. And that's actually very effective. We did this when we worked with Michelle from Michelle's Cozy Home Channel back in October for a Halloween collaboration, and she did a custom playlist for the collaboration that everyone added their videos to, and that really helped uh, you know, a hashtag will do something similar, but this also creates search criteria beyond the hashtag. And it made it really super easy, uh, not unlike hashtag does, to find everything all in one place. And it also increases your the search criteria for YouTube so people have a better chance of finding the videos in the collaboration. So Mona's here. Hey, Mona, great to see you. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you had a great holiday and happy new year to you. So let's see, we've got the second shepherd's pie still baking in the oven. We're going to pull that baby out in just a few minutes. I'm going to give the first one we made one more little taste. This is so good. Let's hold this up and show everyone what the spoonful of food looks like. So we got everything in one bite here from the filling and the topping. Mmm. Supremely yummy. This is really good. Oh my gosh, that is so, so yummy. So I want to get prepared for that other baby to come out of the oven. Get my hot pads here going on. So we've got, we made two batches of filling and two batches of topping. And the list of ingredients for both of those things is right below where you're watching this live stream, as are the ingredients for how we made these hurricane cocktails today. So... We're going to top our mini shepherd's pie with some fresh cut parsley that we got from our herb garden on our balcony. 
Thanks for joining us, Chef Alexis. It was great to have you here this afternoon. It's always a pleasure to see your avatar come across our screen. So he's going to go out and take the dogs for a walk oh, now because yeah. he's all the way on the East Coast and it's going to be dinner time in the not too distant future. So he's got to get something on the I'm stove. Walk. So have a great time with the doggies. So, um, yes, it is. This is definitely a winter comfort food. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Mona is so right. Very comfortable. Yes, Philip needs a refill. I'm going to have to make another hurricane in the not too distant future. Okay, so we're just waiting for the second hot pot. I don't think it looks quite done yet. It's not you, really. You did it, you, I did, did it for 20. Didn't yeah, I? well, it's bigger, right? So it might it's, take longer. So it might take a little longer. Okay, so this one isn't done yet. So we're going to give it a little bit more time. I'm going to give it five more minutes. So we set that to five. Okay, so we're just gonna leave that in there for five more minutes before we pull that baby out. And it's really just about getting it hot because everything's already yeah, cooked. Yeah, everything's already cooked, so you really just wanna warm it all the way through. Uh, we usually gauge the doneness of these mini shepherd's pies by how they get bubbly get around bubbly, the edge, yeah. around the edge of the topping, around the edge of the potatoes. You'll see a little bubbling action going on. That's usually a really good indicator that it's all the way heated through. So for the small ramekins, this took 20 minutes in the oven at 350 degrees. I'm not sure if I mentioned that earlier about the 350 degrees. So 350 degrees for 20 minutes. These ramekins are about uh, three, three and a half inches in diameter. And we're using a small personal baking casserole dish, which also sort of looks like a, a what I want to say, a banana split boat yeah. dish. And this one we've already left in for 20 minutes and it wasn't quite done enough. So we're going to let it go for five more minutes before we pull that baby out. Oh, so nice to have you here with us, Margaret. We really appreciate you coming and hanging out with us. It's Always a pleasure to have you here participating in the chat. And, oh, if you're not familiar with Margaret's Make and Bake channel, she does really cool stuff. And because she's from the UK, she has a lot of recipes and interesting ways of doing things that those of us here in the United States may or may not be familiar with. And also, she has an awesome Instagram feed. And one of my favorite things that Margaret does is she'll post a picture of some sort of disparate ingredients or you're not quite sure what it is. And then she asks you to guess what she's going to be making in her next video. And that's always super fun. So thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate your participation, Margaret. It's always great to see you here. So let's see. Uh, yes, Margaret. <laughs> Karen's commenting that Margaret should do voiceover work for audiobooks. Margaret has a gorgeous voice. I get complimented for my voice a lot, but I have to say, I think Margaret, she, she's got that lovely British accent and her way of speaking is so eloquent. I could just listen to her all day. So Karen, I totally agree with you. I think that's absolutely a spot on observation. So we're still waiting for the last mini shepherd's pie to come out of the oven. We've got two and a half more minutes to go. So we were talking about, um, what's gonna be coming up next year. So we're going to be doing a meatloaf video. We're going to be doing some other things that, well, I can't tell a couple of things because one of them is gonna be for the collaboration, which you'll find out about on Friday. So stay tuned on Friday, we'll have a pre-recorded video with the details inviting you to join us for a collaboration to kick off the new year, 2021. We wanna get it started with some fun food and bring the community together so on Friday, keep your eyes peeled. There'll be a pre-recorded video on our channel that will tell you every detail about the collaboration that we've organized. And we're inviting you to participate. So we hope that you will. And if you have any questions, of course, you can always let us know in the comment section below the video. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> Everyone can grill is saying they need some motivation. Uh, sometimes when you have to come up with a new show every week, it can get hard to figure out what to make, especially if, you know, we've been doing this for five and a half years. So we've made almost all of our go-to recipes at least once already. So we're really finding that now we have to expand our horizons and look for recipes that are things that we like to eat and ingredients that we enjoy, but prepared in new and interesting ways that give an outcome that's not unlike the 50 
or 60 or 100. I think we've done 140 something videos now. Mm -hmm. If you include the live streams, we're almost up to 150 videos. So we've had a lot on our plate, literally cooking as well as boozing. And we intend to continue to do plenty of boozing into the new year. Hmm. Tom's Food Factory is here. Great to see you, Tom. Thanks for joining us today. Happy New Year to you. Yes, Suburban Barbecue. Jim has got the only channel that we know of that has like over a thousand subscribers, but he doesn't have any videos on his channel. He's hugely popular because he participates in other people's live streams at a very high level. And we really appreciate that. It's all the lovely people that have been here in the live stream this afternoon really help make our show better. It's super fun to get instant feedback, to be able to read people's ideas and suggestions as- Yeah, we get lots of great ideas. Yeah, we get lots of great ideas. Really a lot of helpful motivation. So we really appreciate that. Okay. So now we should be able to take this baby out. Let's take a look and see if this one's ready. Looking bubbly. It is bubbly. Okay, this is gonna be a little harder to get out than the other one was. These dishes have hand though. Yes, they do. So I just want to be careful because this is very, very, very hot. Okay, there we go. Ooh, here we go. Okay. Beautiful. That looks pretty good. Okay, let's push this in. We'll save some electricity by turning the oven off. So here we have a larger version of the mini pot pie. This is actually the same uh, ratios of ingredients that we use to make the ones in the ramekin, we just split the ingredients in half and made two of these. So as an alternative, you can make a larger one and a bigger dish. You can also uh, increase the ingredients that we used and make a great big one. Uh, oh, Rick is saying he's so far behind in making videos. Uh, we pretty much have to keep well on top of our schedule <laughs> to meet a deadline once a week. We've found that... Um, Doing the live streams actually has really helped increase our watch time much more than the pre-recorded videos that we do. I think that a lot of people just really enjoy participating in the chat and seeing things unfold, you know, live. Plus, the videos last three to five minutes, and the well, there's that. Live yeah. goes on for an hour. <laughs> yeah, our, most of our. If you're familiar with our channel, you know that most of our videos are actually short. So when doing something for an hour or even longer, it can really help your watch time zoom up quickly. And then especially like today, we have a couple of dozen people in the chat room at a time. So that's more than what we would normally see. So that's super awesome. And so for back to this, we've just taken this baby out of the oven. I think we're probably gonna save this one for dinner. Mm. But what I wanna do is show you how to finish this off. We did not pipe the potatoes on. You can do that if you want. Our mashed potato texture is very stiff and it didn't lend itself to a star tip and a piping bag very well. So we just dolled this on and then spread it around with a spoon. So to make it look a little chefier, I'm just going to take some fresh curly leaf parsley that we chopped very fine with a chef knife and just sprinkle it over the top. Voila. Voila. That's all it takes. And now we've got something that looks a little more chefy. So there you have it. Mini shepherd's pies made from leftover Christmas dinner. How cool is that? I mean, these, they taste good. They look cool. And I, I just think this is a super easy way to take leftovers and make it its own, you know, really cool chef -y looking dish. Make it more fun. Yeah, it's way more fun. And it wasn't hard, so. Okay, yeah, I'm just double checking in on the chat. Okay, so. There we have it. Yay, mini shepherd's pies. So if you missed the ingredients for this, they're in the description below where you're watching this live stream, as are the ingredients. If you want to replicate our hurricane cocktail that we had for lunch today, drinking at lunchtime, how fun is that? Okay, so it's not a total liquid lunch. It was half of a liquid lunch and half of a solid lunch. So, so we're not okay. under the table. Yeah, well, we're not under the table yet, but it's, you know, it's only 20 after one in San Francisco. We'll be under the table by 415. <laughs> okay, so we really appreciate everyone hanging out with us this afternoon. We so hope that you've enjoyed this live stream. 
Well, there's the doorbell. It's probably another delivery of something yeah, fabulous. I'm gonna go check. Okay. Oh, you're going to go check? Yeah. Okay. Well, Philip's going to go check and see what's going on at the front door. Perfect. And we're going to hang out and wait for him to get back. Uh, we did, uh, we had a few different deliveries going on. We finally, if you saw our video from last Friday, we got our new refrigerator. So we're not without a refrigerator anymore. You know, going without a refrigerator is a very challenging task to do, especially if you're kitchen people like we are and you cook every single day because we cook and bake every day. So being without a refrigerator was a little bit of a challenge, but we've got that problem solved. If you saw the video from last Friday, then you already know that. So if you didn't see that video, go check it out because it's kind of fun. And I explain how we chose the new refrigerator that we picked, and then you get to see the new refrigerator. I had no idea that refrigerators were so expensive. I mean, there were some refrigerator models that we saw that were just as expensive as some small cars. So I don't know who has the budget for that kind of a refrigerator. It wasn't us, but we did find something that we really like. And of course, you know, if you have an older kitchen like we do, it can be challenging to find appliances that fit the existing spaces without having to make modifications to your cabinets. And we are fortunate we did find something that fit almost perfectly and is working out for us very, very well. And it also looks cool. So, Thank you so much for being here with us today. We really appreciate it. We're going to save this mini shepherd's pie for dinner later. And then I'm going to finish my lunch shepherd's pie as soon as we're done with this broadcast. So we really appreciate you guys being here today. So nice to see you all here. Oh, Sven's here. Hey, Sven, great to see you. Nice to see you here. We really appreciate you joining us. So we were... Uh, this has been so much fun today. Has, uh, this is great. So we hope you guys give this a try. If you do... Snap a picture with your phone, post it to your Instagram, tag us, Kitchen Queers, in your Instagram post so we can go and check out how this recipe turned out for you. And if you mixed it up with different ingredients, be oh, sure yeah. and let us know what those are we because we would love to see that and we may even want to replicate it. So anyway, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. That we had a lovely, lovely chat here this afternoon and we appreciate everyone participating at such a high level. So we'll be back again next Tuesday. That'll be January 5th. So our first live of 2021 will be Tuesday, January 5th. And we don't know what we're making yet. We're still trying to figure it out. We actually have a huge list of different recipes we want to do. And so we're going to narrow it down to one and we'll have something ready to go for you on Tuesday. And of course, we'll also be making a lunchtime cocktail because we've become known for making cocktails along with the food. So yes, we'll give you a new recipe for something fun and we'll also have some cocktails to try out. So thank you so much everyone for being here. Jim, Sunset, Karen, Flour, Eggs and Yeast, Mona, Rick, Tom, everyone can grill. We really appreciate you guys all being here with us this afternoon. And we hope to see you again next Tuesday. We're gonna continue our Tuesday noontime live streams through as far into 2021 as we can, maybe the whole entire year. Well, until we run out of ideas for two years. <laughs> well, when we run out of ideas, we're going to go back to the beginning where we started and we'll just make everything all over again for the people that missed out the first time. So, okay. Happy New Year, everyone. Great to see you all here. We'll be back again next Tuesday and look for a new video on Friday, a new pre recorded video where we'll be inviting you to join us for a really fun collaboration to kick off 2021. So we'll be back again next Tuesday. Thank you so much for being here today. Happy New Year. We love you all. And we really appreciate you being here. And we'll see you again very soon. Ciao. Okay. Ciao, Bella.